everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal cortical access, abbreviated as the HPAA. So with that, let's give it a go. So what is the HPAA? So the HPAA is a regulation cycle that modulates the release of cortisol and other hormones. So the HPAA begins in the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus. And in the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus, we have small body neurons. So small body neurons are going to be responsible for synthesizing and releasing CRH. So CRH is a neuropeptide hormone that is going to be made up of 41 amino acids. So after CRH is synthesized and released, CRH will move through the hypophysial portal system and travel to the anterior pituitary. So how does CRH affect the anterior pituitary? Well, in the anterior pituitary, we have corticotrophs. And corticotrophs are cells that are going to be responsible for synthesizing and releasing a peptide hormone called ACTH. So when CRH goes into the interstitial fluid that bathes the corticotrophs, CRH is able to bind to the CRH receptors in the plasma membrane. So CRH receptors are going to be G protein coupled receptors and they're going to be coupled to GS proteins. So when CRH binds to these receptors, this activates the GS protein, which activates adenylate cyclase. Adenylate cyclase will then catalyze the conversion of ATP into cyclic AMP and then cyclic AMP activates protein kinase A. Protein kinase A will then activate L-type calcium channels, which allows them to open, which allows calcium to flow into the cell. The increase in calcium in the cytosol will increase vesicular fusion, which allows ACTH to be released from the cell and move into the interstitial fluid. The ACTH will then move into blood vessels where it will be transported throughout the body. So the main effect of CRH is it's going to stimulate the anterior pituitary to release ACTH. So after ACTH is released, ACTH moves throughout the body and moves to a specific region called the adrenal cortex in our adrenal gland. So what is the effect of ACTH on the adrenal gland? So inside the adrenal cortex, we have cells, and these cells can respond to ACTH. So when ACTH enters the interstitial fluid, it can bind to the melanocortin-2 receptor, which is present on the plasma membrane. So the melanocortin-2 receptor is a G-protein coupled receptor that is coupled to a GS protein. So when ACTH binds to this receptor, it activates the GS protein, which activates adenylate cyclase. Adenylate cyclase catalyzes the conversion of ATP into cyclic AMP, and then cyclic AMP activates protein kinase A. And protein kinase A has a number of effects. The first effect of protein kinase A is that it can increase the activity of the side chain cleavage enzyme. So the side chain cleavage enzyme is the enzyme that catalyzes the rate determining step of cortisol synthesis. So by increasing the activity of this enzyme, we increase cortisol synthesis. In addition, protein kinase A will also increase the synthesis of P450 enzymes used in cortisol synthesis. In addition, protein kinase A will also increase the synthesis of the LDL receptors. These LDL receptors allow cells to take up more cholesterol. So therefore, by increasing the synthesis of these LDL receptors, we also allow these cells to take up more cholesterol. And since cortisol is derived from cholesterol, if we increase the availability of cholesterol to these cells, we increase the amount of cortisol that we produce. In addition, protein kinase A will also increase the synthesis of HMG coenzyme A reductase, which is the enzyme that catalyzes the rate-determining step of cholesterol synthesis, which allows the cell to accumulate more cholesterol, which allows the cell to produce more cortisol. So the overall effect here is that ACTH is going to allow the cells in the adrenal cortex to produce more cortisol. So ACTH, which is a peptide hormone, is going to stimulate the adrenal gland to synthesize and release cortisol. So cortisol is then going to exert negative feedback on the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus. So how does cortisol inhibit the anterior pituitary from releasing ACTH? Well, inside the blood, cortisol is mainly going to be bound to binding proteins. 
around 90% of cortisol that circulates in the blood is going to be bound to protein. So when cortisol is bound to its protein, it can dissociate from that protein and become free cortisol. The free cortisol then can move into the corticotrophs of the adrenal cortex. And when cortisol is in the cytosol, it can bind to its receptor. So in the cytosol, we have the glucocorticoid receptor, which is the receptor for cortisol. And the glucocorticoid receptor is going to be bound to a chaperone protein. And one example of a chaperone protein is HSP90. So when cortisol binds to the glucocorticoid receptor, it causes these two proteins to dissociate from one another. So the glucocorticoid receptor cortisol complex dissociates from the chaperone protein. This allows the glucocorticoid receptor cortisol complex to move into the nucleus where it will bind to glucocorticoid response elements on DNA. When it binds to these elements, it allows the glucocorticoid receptor cortisol complex to make a homodimer. And when the homodimer forms, this allows cortisol to regulate the expression of different genes. So the effect of cortisol on the corticotroph is it's going to decrease the expression of the CRH receptor and ACTH. So by decreasing the expression of the CRH receptor, this decreases the corticotroph sensitivity to CRH. This therefore makes it more difficult for CRH to stimulate the corticotrophs to release ACTH. In addition, cortisol is also going to decrease the expression of ACTH as well. And a third effect of cortisol is it's going to decrease the release of presynthesized ACTH stored in vesicles. So in summary, cortisol decreases ACTH synthesis and release from the corticotrophs in the anterior pituitary. So that's how cortisol inhibits the anterior pituitary from releasing ACTH. The second region that cortisol can exert negative feedback on is the hypothalamus. So in the hypothalamus, we see a very similar mechanism where cortisol is going to modulate the expression of different genes. In the hypothalamus, what we see is a decrease in the expression of CRH genes. So we decrease the synthesis of CRH by these cells. In addition, we also see that cortisol decreases the release of pre-synthesized CRH stored in vesicles. So cortisol decreases CRH synthesis and CRH release by the small body neurons in the hypothalamus. Now the last thing to close off the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal cortical axis is the effect of ACTH on the hypothalamus. So the ACTH can also inhibit the hypothalamus from releasing CRH. So ACTH also produces some negative feedback as well. So this right here is the entire HPAA. Now the last thing I want to talk about today is how the higher central nervous system can affect the release of CRH. So as you should know, CRH is released by the small body neurons in the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus. However, the release of CRH is going to be modulated by the central nervous system. So three main things are going to stimulate the hypothalamus to release CRH. This is going to include physical stressors, emotional stressors, as well as biochemical stressors. All three of these things stimulate the hypothalamus to release CRH. In addition, CRH is also going to be modulated by the circadian rhythm. So corticotrophs release ACTH in a circadian rhythm. So ACTH tends to be greater in the early morning, and then ACTH decreases in the late afternoon and early evening. Now, as you should know, ACTH exerts negative feedback on CRH release. So when ACT release is high, this will decrease CRH release from the hypothalamus. In addition, ACTH will also increase cortisol secretion. So when cortisol secretion is increased, Increased, this will also exert negative feedback on the hypothalamus, decreasing CRH secretion. So we can see here that CRH release is also going to be modulated by circadian rhythms. So that's it for this video. I hope this video helped you understand the HPAA, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.